Okay, and we're back to Pirke Avos. Yay. <laughs> um, okay, we are up to uh, Peric Gimel Mishnah Yutes in the most, um, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know what you call it, in the in the numbering system that ha that, that makes the most divisions. Okay, so I think in the standard, this might be Yud Zion. Uh, and this one, we're going to be on for how many weeks? At least one... Uh, two three four i think four weeks because we're gonna have to take each clause on its own okay so let's go ahead and translate this ruby alazar ben azaria omer uh ruby alazar ben azaria uh azaria uh, says in ain torah in derech eretz if there is no torah there is no derech eretz okay and i'm just gonna this is gonna obviously be one of our questions i'm just gonna translate this here literally as Way of the land, okay. Um, and then it says in in derech eretz in Torah. Um, uh, if there is no derech eretz, uh, there is no Torah. Okay. Next, im in chachma in yira. If there is, uh, let's put a semicolon here. Oh no, we'll do another thing. Hold on a second here. I'll make these separate sentences. Okay. If there is no fear. Okay, or awe, I guess. Uh, there is no wisdom. Uh, Im in, oh, sorry, I got that backwards. If there's no wisdom, there is no fear or awe. If there is no fear or awe, uh, there is no wisdom. Im in bina, in das. If there is no understanding, in das, there is no knowledge. Im in das, if there is no knowledge, in bina, there is no understanding. Im in kemach in Torah, if there is no flower, uh, there is no Torah. Im in Torah in kemach, if there is no uh, Torah, there is no flower. Okay, so very easy to translate, and uh, I don't suspect, I don't expect the questions to be very um, numerous here. Okay, um, and we, you know, we'll ask questions on the entire. Um, on the generalities, but tonight we're going to focus just on this first clause um, here. Okay, so what are the questions? Yeah, Tamar. Um, this might just be like a factual question, but when it says like ain't this, ain't that, does that yeah. mean like if a person doesn't have this thing, then they also won't have that thing, or is it some other framework? Okay, yeah. So uh, what is the meaning of the if there is no X, there is no Y, uh, and vice versa uh, uh, formula. Um, yeah, hold on a second, and vice versa uh, formula. Yeah, okay, um, yeah, that needs to be understood. Okay, uh, in other words, what exactly uh, is this saying about each of these pairings? Okay, good. Okay, next. Yeah, Tamar? Hey, Lauren can go first. Since okay, Lauren. Um, I guess also like what are the definitions, I guess, of those phrases? Yeah. Like what do they mean by Torah? What do they mean right, by okay, so Torah what Torah? is uh, the definition of Torah, okay, in this context? And I think that uh, to me, it seems like there are uh, at least... Actually, we won't say yet. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll go through we'll cycle through definitions in a little while. Um, okay, and then uh, what is the definition uh, definition of uh, derech eretz uh, in this context? Okay, yeah, Tamar. Um, also, just like in terms of, I guess this is an elaboration on my first question, but like um, when there's cause and effect, you have to have something come first, and it sounds like yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> okay, right, yeah. So. Um, uh, if we take this literally, then how do you get started? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Alex. Um, what can we necessarily learn from the two clauses with the Torah book ending the other things? Um, ah, that's a good, okay. You mean in the, in the entire mission now you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a great question. Okay. So what is the relationship between the first and fourth clauses, uh, both of which uh are about torah right so like is does uh does torah mean something different in each clause 
uh, and if it's the same, then um, then like how do Torah, Derech Eretz, uh, and flower relate to one another? Okay, and also why are these stated here as bookends? Obviously, we're not going to be able to answer that question this time, uh, but we will need to answer it by the time we're done with the Mishnah. You have Vanessa? What flower? I don't know if that's a Yeah, up. so you know, I, I think what I want to do is, I think just for this time, let's just focus on this clause um, okay. because we're not going to even answer these questions until uh, we get to those. So we'll, we'll just keep it uh, at this clause here. Yeah, um, uh, Alex? Um, this question is related to my last one. Yeah. Um, if you can compare Torah, Derech, Eretz, and, and Flower, does that mean you could compare Derech, Eretz, and Flower without Torah there? Or do you need Torah for those things to all be connected? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, let's just say here, are Derech, Eretz, and Flower only connected through Torah? And Vanessa, if it looks like I'm, I'm like, addressing that fourth clause. The only reason I'm addressing that clause now is because uh, it might be relevant to this first clause. Um, so don't feel like I'm using a double standard here. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Lauren? Or was that- um, The question is like, what is, um, what's like a lesson, I guess, that we're meant yeah. to learn from? Right, so what definition? is the practical uh, lesson or application um, uh, of this uh, clause? Yeah. Uh, I guess if, I'll say of, of each clause so we can uh, keep that question for next time. I'm going to add a question to the Derek Eretz thing, which is why is this called, uh, like, or I guess what is the implication? No, let's say why is this is this called uh, Derek Eretz? Okay. Uh, yeah, Tamar? Um, if this is for like a custom in training, okay. then. Uh, I guess what, yeah, what's, I mean, I guess the, the general question of how is that supposed to be read, but also then would this person not have Torah? Like, it, what does that okay, right. mean? So who's the intended audience of this, uh, of this Mishnah? Um, if it's for a uh, Hasid in training, uh, Hasid in, oops, sorry, in training, which uh, I, since this is kind of, we're still at the beginning of our year of Pirkei Avos, uh, so I'm just going to repeat this, that um, we've been kind of having the working theory that uh, based on the Gemara, I forgot what the Gemara is. I think it's in Bava Metzia, maybe. Haiman or Bava Kama. Haiman debay lemehavi chasida likayim mili deavos. If a person wants to be a chasid, which we translate as uh, extra righteous, then he should fulfill the uh, teachings of Pirkei Avos. So we're working under the assumption that this is uh, primarily intended for a chasid in training. Uh, the Ramam also says that this is for people who are judges, who are like leaders. Um, but we also have uh, learned that a lot of these Mishnayos can be applied to other people as well. So tomorrow's question is, if this is for Chassid in training, do we really need to tell this person what happens if there is no Torah? Okay, doesn't he have Torah? And I guess that kind of segues to another question, which is, um, what is the uh, the Hava Amina uh, of each clause? Uh, Hava Amina... Um, of each, uh, my Hebrew switching is not working as well as I would hope. Havamina of each clause, meaning, um, what uh, would we think if it didn't teach us this? I know I had a typo there. If it didn't teach us this, um, teach us this, and why would we think that? Okay, is that what you're gonna ask, Alex? I saw your hand go up. Uh, not exactly, but I don't know if my question is relevant because um you said or the assumption is um do they have torah but i was gonna ask like what does it mean to have torah yeah necessarily in that context yeah I'm, i'll attack that onto this uh what does it mean to have or not have torah okay so instead of having oh yeah vanessa sorry no it's, go ahead it's like Oh, so whatever having Torah means, is this something qualitative or quantitative? Is this something that like okay, binary, like do you have it or not? Or is yeah. it something that like you grow in having? Okay, is this, uh, uh, is this, I guess you, you could probably ask that for either Torah or Derek Eretz, which is um, for either, for, for all of these, uh, all of these variables, um, 
does ha uh, ha are, are having and not having uh, to be understood understood in a binary sense or is there a quantitative quantitative sliding scale? Yeah, good question. Okay, so rather than do what we usually do, which is to try to answer these on our own, I wanna actually tackle um, the first question first, okay? And then the uh, second question, because I want to uh, only operate based on one answer for both questions tonight, okay? Um, even though there might be other ones, okay? So uh, you'll see what I mean in a second. So the Rambam, uh, and I think a lot of, uh, all of the standard Mepharshim that we tend to learn uh, in this year uh, take the same or similar approaches, okay? Um, and by the way, I did not translate this into English this time, so I'm just going to translate verbally. Rambam says, Yir tebezeh shekol echad mehashnaim mo'il lemetsius ha'acher umashlim oso. So the Rambam says that what this means, this is he's talking about uh, each of these clauses. He says that um, uh, each, what it means is that each of these two things benefits the existence of the other and completes it. Okay, and that's in contrast to what Tosvos Yom Tov is going to say. Tosvos Yom Tov says, I mean, they agree, but Tosvos Yom Tov is going to say why you have to say this. He says, "Vlo baha tana lomar akedima veihor." This Tana, the author of this Mishnah, is not coming to talk about what has to come first and what comes later. He's not saying that you have to have one before you have the other. Because if you say that, uh, so then neither of them would be able to exist. Why? He's kind, of, he's kind of wordy here. If the only way to get one is if you have the other one, and each one is a prerequisite for the for its fellow, then you won't be able to find this, the second one without the first one. You're not going to have any of them. So that's basically what Tamara said in her question here, which is that uh, it can't mean it literally that if you don't have one, you can't have the other because then there's no way to get started. Okay, so, um, we're, we're, so just to answer here, uh, how, how do I usually do this? I'll do it like this. I'll put, type the answers here. Okay, so this is, um, oh, hold on just one second. Ooh, that, I did not mean to highlight in black. I meant to de-highlight. Okay, so the answer is, um, uh, according to the Rambam, uh, is um, it's not saying that each one is indispensable. Indis is that each one indispensable? Indispensable for the other, uh, because then you couldn't get started. Uh, rather, sorry, it's not telling you saying that each one is procedurally, procedurally, or chronologically. I don't know the best way to say that. Chronologically indispensable for attaining the other, um, because then you couldn't get started. Rather. It's saying that each one benefits the other and completes or perfects it. Okay. Any questions there? I, I think that's a pretty good argument. You kind of have to say that. Or at least you can't say that you absolutely need one to get the other. Okay. Next, let's answer the question, uh, what is Derek Eretz? Okay. Um, so there are, to my knowledge, three ways that Hazal used the term Derek Eretz. Okay, and let's see uh, if you can get all of them, and if there is one that I'm not thinking of. Okay, what do you what do you say? Yeah, Tamar. Like livelihood. Okay, so Chazal tend to mean one of three things by uh, Derek Eretz. So one is, um, hold on, one is livelihood. Okay, uh, or another term for that is parnasa. Okay, what is another one? Yeah, Lauren. Um, I guess like relations, sexual relations. Yeah. I think. The other one is sexual relations. Okay. And that one is, for example, you know, the only place that I know of, I, I'm, I'm sure that it's used in more places, but in the Haggadah is uh, in the Haggadah, it says, Vayar es onyenu, that God saw our affliction, zo precious derech eretz. It means separation uh, of, of marital relations. Kamash and Amar, as it says, Vayar lakim es b'nei Yisrael v'yed alakim. Uh, God saw b'nei Yisrael and God knew. Let's just see if there's anyone who says that explicitly in the Mepharshim here. Uh, who would say this? Uh, uh, let's look at this. Uh, derech eretz. 
yeah, Shapishu Hanashim and Hanashim, Shazehu Derech Eretz. Um, so uh, this is separation of the men and the women, which is Derech Eretz Kamod to Amar Ve'ish In Ba'aretz Lavo Alein Kederech Kol Aretz. It's like Lot's daughters said um, to each other when they thought that that the world was destroyed. They said, "There's no man to come upon us like uh, in the manner of, of of all the earth." Okay, so that's called Derech Eretz because it's the way of 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 you know the human species. Okay, and Tamar. I don't know if Chazal uses this, but like respect. Okay, so this is the one that is hard to get a good English equivalent. Okay, so I, I think you're on the right track here. So let's let's just list a bunch of candidates here. Respect. Okay, anyone have any other candidates for that concept of Derek Eretz? Social decorum. Okay, social decorum. Um, yeah, Lauren. I guess it's it's similar to respect, but maybe like good mitos. I don't know how to yeah, say. Yeah, okay. Sometimes it, um... it's used synonymous with good good uh good mitos. Okay. Um so um when I, I prepare usually I prepare this with uh with Isaiah, but Isaiah was out of town on Shabbos, so I prepared this with Isaac. Isaac used the word etiquette, okay, which I think is a, a good um a good translation. Now I don't know if Isaac was getting it from this, but I want to show you how the Rambam uses uh Derek Eretz. Um, and again, this is not universal, but just to give you some ideas here, um, the Rambam in um, uh, Hilchus Brachos, Perak Zion, the whole Perak is uh, is as follows. Min, I'm not going to read the whole Perak. Minhagos Rabos Nahagu Chachme Yisrael Basuuda Bekulan Derech Eretain. So many uh, customs were instituted by the Chachamim of Israel at the meal. Uh, and all of them are derech eretz. Okay, so so it's interesting because uh, you you maybe you could translate uh, minhag here. You could translate the normal way we translate minhag, or maybe you could say that minhag means uh, etiquette. But I'm going to show you some examples. Now he goes through a lot of things, but I highlighted ones that I think uh, are like outstanding examples. So one is he says, habayis mevarach hamotzi lechem umashlim bracha v'achkaf So the uh, the host or the owner of the house uh, makes the bracha of hamoti and completes the bracha and then cuts it. The guest makes the birkas amazon for everyone so that he can bless the owner of the house. Okay, that's one example of derech Here's another one. Uh, this is talking about when you cut the um, the bread, when you split the bread. The eno botzea lo prusa katana. You should not call. You should not cut small pieces. because then you look stingy. You shouldn't cut huge pieces, because then that looks gluttonous. Okay, so that's another Derek Eretz thing. Um, uh, here's another one, uh, which we don't clearly don't do nowadays. In Masichin Basuda, we don't converse at a meal, we don't have conversations. So you don't uh, uh, come into danger. I guess we're worried they're going to choke. Uh, here's another one. In mistaklin bifneha ochel v'lo manaso shlo levaisho. You should not look at you should not stare at the faces of people who are eating, uh, nor you should should you stare at their portion. I think that's what manaso means, so that you don't uh, embarrass them. Uh, here's another one. This one's cute. Hashamish haomid lifnei hamasubin. If there's a waiter who's waiting upon the people who are eating, ino uh, so he should not eat with them. But derech rachmanus he litein latoch piv mikol tavshu v'tavshu. It is a manner of mercy to put into his mouth. Uh, a little bit from each dish, of dato to ease his mind. Okay, because you know he's like looking in his, his mouth is watering at all the food, so you should feed him a little bit. Again, okay, here's one more example. Usur la orchim little klum imashili fnehem v'litein biad v'no obito shel bab habayis. Okay, so this is a very interesting uh, uh, one. Is that it's usur for any guest to take something that is served to them and give it to the? I assume this is the young son or young daughter of the host. Okay, why? Shema yisbaish ba suda. Maybe the um, the uh, per, the host will be embarrassed. Shahari ein lo ela ma shehevi lifnem because maybe the only food that he had was what he served to the guests. Venimsu haktanim notlim oso holchin, and then maybe the kids will take this food and run off. Okay, so again, there's a whole there's a whole chapter about this. So that's why I really like what um what Isaac said that it's etiquette, uh, social decorum. I think also fits really well. Uh, so those are the more, let's, let me, I'm just going to put this here. Um, I'm going to put this on a sliding scale. Hold on. Um, yeah. So good meetos would be the broadest conception of Derek Eretz. Okay. Um, respect 
arguably is more narrow because respect is like interpersonal. Social decorum is getting more from the like just respect beyond the vera to like specific, you know, rules or guidelines. And then etiquette is like the most uh, particularized. Okay. So the question is, oh, and I forgot to, sorry, I forgot to read another, uh, an example of where Derek Eretz means livelihood. So there's another Mishnah that's in chapter two, which uh, we have not done because we've only done chapter three, which says, a Rabban Gamliel Benosh Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi Omer. Um, so Rabban Gamliel, uh, the son of Rabbi, of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi uh, says, Yafet Tamator im Derek Eretz. Torah study is good with Derek Eretz. Because the exertion in both of them makes sin, uh, makes iniquity forgotten. Uh, okay. And any Torah which is not accompanied uh, by work, sofa will ultimately uh, be what word would uh, what we say here? Not nullified. nullified? Yeah, it usually means nullified, but I feel like there's a better word here. Will ultimately cease, will ultimately cease, uh, and cause iniquity. Okay, so here's an example where uh, I don't think it's that much of a stretch to say that Derek Eretz here is being used to mean work. Okay, so now we have three uh, three candidates for what Derek Eretz means in our Mishnah, either livelihood, um, sexual relations, or uh, or um, uh, like Mido's etiquette, etc. What do you think it means here? And can you make a case for it? Yeah, Tamar? I guess based on the other mission, it seems like there's some content going on for um, livelihood. Okay, so you could say that means livelihood because uh, maybe you can say in Perkeavos, it's used that way. Uh, the only thing that uh, would lead me to say that that's not the strongest evidence is each of these statements is made by a different Tana, and it's possible that the, each Tana is using it in a different way. So it's it's definitely a reasonable assumption, but not uh, uh, an ironclad proof. Yeah, Lauren? Well, I guess maybe the reason why I would think it's not um, livelihood is because the last phrase in Mishnah talks about in Kemach in Torah, and yeah. I think that usually means like a livelihood, but... Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally think it refers to like the etiquette, but I think that's maybe based on okay. um, so, how people technically use it. Yeah, okay, good. So obviously we can't fully uh, say this until we learn what kemach is, um, but it does not seem to mean literal flower, okay? Uh, and kemach is, uh, is you know, uh, at least the way people use in kemach in Torah seems to be like lively thing. So the one who makes this argument that I saw is uh, in, you know, this, uh, I'll show you this feature in case any of you use all Torah for this. Um uh, oh, you know what? I feel like I have, I'm duty bound to uh, announce something here. Um, uh, here's a commercial. That's not really a commercial. That's a bad way to say it. Um, Rabbi Novetsky sent out an email and put a um, an announcement on Facebook, uh, which I'm just going to read here because I think we owe this to, uh, to Rabbi Novetsky and Alatora. He says, uh, dear friends, the horrors of the last two weeks have reminded us once again of the always present dangers in being overconfident in our own ability, capabilities and underestimating the resolve of our enemies to destroy us. Yet they have also succeeded in instantaneously unifying our nation against the Amalekite uh, enemy. And in a, the midst of the inferno itself and in the ongoing aftermath of the almost unfathomable evil, there have also been uh, so many unbelievably heroic acts of self-sacrifice and boundless acts of generosity and kindness. These have been a greatly needed small source of comfort for all of us. Al Hatora is shorthanded at the moment. We welcome volunteers who want to help out. Um, and this is why I'm reading this now, because in case any of you wants to volunteer, um, then contact Al Hatora. Um, he says, uh, as several of its key people are currently on the battlefronts, putting their lives on the line to protect our people and awaiting the start of our missions to obliterate the existential threats from facing, facing our country. We fervently pay that, uh, pray that Hashem will protect them together with each and every one of our soldiers and give them the strength and courage to wipe out the modern day errors of Amalek from the face of the earth. With so many lives lost and so many others at great risk, it feels somewhat hollow to be sharing new resources. However, with the explicit encouragement from Alator's own Chayalim, uh, serving on the front lines that we must continue moving forward. Also on the home front, we will nonetheless share some very important new resources 
which will hopefully greatly enhance our Torah study. And then they share the new resources. So I'm just reading that to say that if you want to uh, volunteer or, uh, you know, obviously there's many places you can make donations, uh, but, uh, you know, it's always good to donate to Torah as well. Um, anyway, so back to our regularly scheduled programming. In, uh, I forgot to talk about this here. So on our Torah, they have the... Um, uh, the Parish HaMishnah LaRambam. Okay, so that's the Rambam's commentary on the Mishnah, uh, which he wrote in uh, in Arabic and was translated into Hebrew. Okay, but at some point they added this um, in some of the uh, Masechtos, Be'ur Le Parish LaRambam uh, LaMishnah. So it's a commentary on the Rambam's commentary on the Mishnah. I think this is written by Rav Yitzhak Shelat. Yeah, Um who is one of the, um, you know, the publishers, editors, uh, translators of the Rambam. Uh, and it's very, very good. It basically brings down a bunch of other sources um, from the Rambam and like, uh, you know, functions as like a super commentary. So here's what he says. He says basically what Lauren said. He says, uh, he says, Im derech eretz kan hu ha'esek b'parnasa. If in our Mishnah, derech eretz means involvement in a livelihood, le'el, like above uh, in 2.2, so then the first clause in our Mishnah means that livelihood is blessed in the merit of being involved in Torah. Okay, and he brings some sources, which I omitted here. Ah, hasefa, but the, the last clause of our Mishnah, in in kemach in Torah, more lechora shederch eretz shebereisha inam b'muvan shaparnasa. Exactly what Lauren said, that the last clause is talking about flour, which seems to be indicate that the first clause is not talking about parnasa. Uh, but that rather the first clause is talking about um, uh, proper conduct and good midos. Okay, so um, what we're going to do, I, I did see that the, um, I think the Abravanel, I think, says that Derek Eretz here is talking about parnasa. Um, and maybe some other ones, but for, for tonight, we're going to assume that it's talking about number three. Yeah, Vanessa? Can I, before we assume that, can I, I'm wondering if this is actually a way to answer one of the later questions of like, why are we going back to Torah in the last sure. clause? Yeah. And it feels like Kemach could be like the end product of the Derech Arts of like, of the toil, like the first clause is talking about like toiling of like the physical world and like infusing Torah with that and like the yeah. end. The last clause is talking about okay. like actually producing results. Is okay. That, All right. So that that's, that is uh, I'm gonna just mention this as an uh, as an aside. Um, uh, so Vanessa says that um, it's possible that uh, that clauses one and four uh, are each talking about a different uh, aspect of Parnassa. Um, uh, the the first clause is talking about the like um, the activity of of earning a livelihood, uh, whereas the fourth clause is talking about the uh, the the dollars. <laughs> okay, right. The uh, the uh, or or the outcome. Is that what you're saying? Yes, exactly. Okay, good. All right, that's a great approach, uh, and I I. I uh, definitely think that's worth exploring. Um, the four commentaries, uh, three commentaries that I chose to learn tonight, uh, all take it in the third way. So for tonight, we're going to just focus on the third way. But I think this is good. And I think what we should do is when we get to the uh, the fourth clause, we should revisit the first clause and explore, um, you know, other ways of learning it like yours. Okay. So now that we've answered these two questions, um uh now we can try to answer our other questions okay um which i really should have posted in the comments uh but let me just post them now okay so that's two and three and uh, one and okay i'll just do a time okay there we go so all the questions are in the comments okay so anyone have any uh any other uh, answers to uh uh, to this now that we're saying that that uh, derech eret equals some form of good meals, respect, social decorum, or etiquette. Any answers to the explanations of the whole clause or answers to particular questions? Yeah, Lauren. I mean, I feel like this is very obvious, so I don't know if it's like um, 
like a good idea, but I guess it's like basically like maybe you might think that if you have Torah, then you don't need to work on your etiquette or, you know, how you're behaving. But the mission is telling you that, no, like you, you really also need to, you can't forget about one or the other. Like if you have, just because you have good etiquette doesn't mean that you shouldn't be learning Torah. I kind of like they, they, maybe they, each of them both have to be focused on, um, maybe that's like a lesson to the chassid. Okay. So I definitely think that that is a good start for an approach. And I think that you're right, that that, that stating it just like that, uh, I think it needs to be developed a little bit more into a Kiddush. Uh, and fortunately, two of the Mepharshan that we're going to uh, learn uh, do that. Okay. So uh, I think that's a good first step. Yeah, Vanessa? I'm wondering if it's saying, uh, linearly, it's saying without Torah, there's no Derech Eretz. So you can't have any sort of etiquette without the Torah. Like, if you like interact with non-Jews, they have a different idea of what etiquette is and like true etiquette is like what the Torah is saying. And then yeah. the other way, you can have derech eretz without Torah. So like, how is that different? Wait, I had this in my head and then I lost it. <laughs> There's no derech eretz. There is no. Oh, and you can't like just practice Torah and like memorize the whole Gemara if you don't have actual like meat. Like you need the meat to like balance. The whole point of Torah is to like cultivate us into like higher beings and like people who like control our emotions and control our behavior. Yeah. And if you're not using the Torah to do that, if you're just like using it to like feel impressed with your wisdom or something, that's not Torah. I don't love my read, but. Okay. So I, I think I like each component of your read, but I feel like it's two different reads on Derek Eretz. Okay. So the first thing you were saying yes. uh, that is, I think is acknowledging an important point, which is if Derek Eretz means etiquette, there are different cultural etiquettes depending on what culture you're in. And, um, or maybe I misunderstood you. Sorry, say that first thing you said. No, again. you you understood it perfectly. Yeah, That's okay. exactly what yeah. I mean. If you go right. to different so, cultures or different different people have different ideas of what etiquette is. Right. But then there's like true like derech eretz, which is what the Torah prescribes. Okay, right. So in other words, there's there's Torah derech eretz, and then there's just derech eretz uh, in whatever culture. So let's say like in in uh, I, I don't know good examples of this. let's say in Britain, okay, right, in in the UK or whatever, right? Maybe it's good derech eretz to like. Uh, hold your teacup in a certain way or like in Japan that like, you know, you, uh, you hand someone something like this, you know, with both of your hands or, you know, so the, the, every, every uh, culture has different uh, types of etiquette. Um, but this is really talking about the, you know, d the concept of Derek Eretz finds its m most true or beneficial expression if it's founded on principles of Torah. So I like that idea. And then uh, the idea that you need, okay, now I'm also lost. Your second idea was that you can't just hope to uh, become a perfected person if you just have knowledge. Um, but derech eretz is also necessary. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I guess like we're talking about the concept of like having Torah and what it means to have Torah. I think you can't fully say you have Torah if you don't have Mido. Okay, so I would say the same I thing that, uh, that I think that is true, but I think that we need to like clarify and elaborate on what that what that means, you know? Um, and I'll, I'll give you a proof, not a proof that you, um, this could cut both ways, but uh, there's a, a, a halacha, which I don't think we practice nowadays, uh, even though it still is relevant. Uh, I don't think we we are, are as hardcore about it. Um, there's a halacha in choosing a Rebbe, which says, hold on. so this is going to be in the Ramam, in the Mishnah Torah, Sefer Hamada, Hilchus Talmud Torah, chapter four, halacha one. Um Oh no, halacha two. So he's talking about. So he first starts off talking about how we only teach Torah to a student who has good midos, okay, um, or to someone who is um, uh, neutral, like someone who's like a clean slate. Um, but then he says, "V'chein harav she'ena holach b'derek tova." If a rav is not uh, following a good path, afal pi shechaham gadol hu, even though he's a great uh, sage, v'chol ha'am tzrichlo, and everyone needs him. In Mislamdimimenu, we don't learn from him until he returns to the good. Shnemar, as it says, Kisifse Kohen Yishmaru Das, Vitori Yavakshami Pihu, Kimalach Adashem Tabako. So it says in Malachi, uh, for the lips of the Kohen preserve knowledge, and Torah they should seek from his mouth, because he is an angel of Hashem, uh, Lord of hosts. Amru Chachamim, the sages said, Im Dome Harav Lamalach Hashem Tabakos, if your Rav is is uh similar to an angel of Hashem. Torah then you should seek Torah from his mouth, being love, and if not, then you should not seek Torah from his mouth. So I think this could support and go against you, uh, Vanessa, is that on the one hand, you see, you can have Torah 
without good mitos, because it's otherwise this case wouldn't exist. But it is this halakha is also pointing to the fact that like there's a severe lack in your Torah to the point where we don't want anyone learning from a toxic, uh, uh, you know, Rebbe who does not have good mitos, you know. Um, so I, I think there's a, you know, I, I think what you're saying is true. I think we need to develop it a little bit more. Okay, uh, let's go with uh, Tamar next. Yeah, Tamar. Um, I want to also float like another type of direction, maybe, which sure. is um, if you lack Derek Eretz on a certain level, maybe like no one wants to talk to you. Ah, okay, good. So that's like utilitarian. Yeah, it's um, like a practical um, obstacle. Okay, good. Yeah, I like that idea as well. Uh, that if you are, um, uh, I guess the equivalent of like a uh, a bedside manner for a doctor, you know, like the doctor can have all the medical knowledge, but the practice of medicine involves more than just um, applying medical knowledge. It involves the way you interact with the patient. So too with a uh, you know a rofe hanefesh, you know, with a chacham. Uh, then it's not just about what you know and what you what content you can convey. It has to do with like how you interact with your students or how you interact with the community. And if you don't have good derech eretz, then it's going to be uh, then the Torah will not reach its uh, intended uh, you know uh, goal. Yeah. So that would be it. without derech eretz, there's no Torah. Can we say uh, uh, com uh, the the other side with that understanding of derech eretz? Without Torah, there's no derech eretz. And this is not just a question for tomorrow, but for anyone according to that approach. I could maybe take a little, a little sure. um, yeah. I guess if I'm thinking, if you're thinking of Derek Haritz as specifically like interacting with people in a way that helps you uh, get along and have good, you know, productive and positive interactions. Yeah. And the Torah does give you Chachma about human nature that could help with that. I don't yeah. know why it would be so extreme, but it, you know, it seems like it would help with that. Okay. Yeah. Right. So without Torah, then you're not going to really know um, how to apply the, uh, the Derek Haritz um, uh, in a way that is, uh, I guess, uh, effective. Lauren, you want to, you have another idea or you want to add to this? I kind of want to add to um, Vanessa's idea and maybe elaborate on it. Oh yeah, sure. Before you add to Vanessa's idea, let me just uh, uh, try my, my hand at this is maybe you can say that, um, that, okay, hold on. Let me just see if I can work this out. So like, like, Oh, maybe I'm adding to Vanessa's also. Okay, why don't you go first then? Okay, um, Lauren, and then uh, my, maybe my, I'm using Vanessa's idea to answer tomorrow. So yeah, go ahead, Lauren. Yeah, I was thinking that maybe both of them are imperfect without the other. Like maybe if you don't have Torah, then your Derek Harris is never going to be like totally perfected in the sense that like it has to, I feel like your Derek Harris has to be grounded in Torah. Like I'm kind of thinking about how, let's say like societal norms might not value ever having a place for hatred, for instance, but the Torah says there is a place for hatred. Um, and no, then I, was, I, was just, I was I was literally just thinking of that example because I just finished listening to uh, Rabbi Zimmer's shear. Um, right. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's where right. I got it from. But then yeah. also for the for the other side, um, maybe your Torah is also lacking if you don't have a focus on Derek Haaretz because like I'm thinking in that case about let's say like rabbis that find out later they cut up in an abuse scandal and then right. their Torah gets like questioned in their books and then I feel like there is something lacking in the Torah they're producing if they could also at the same time be committing you know such terrible acts okay That's right kind of so, so I actually am going to there I'm going to disagree I'm not going to disagree with what you're saying but I'm going to disagree with the interpretation because I think like you know we had this spectrum of Derek Harris coming good mitos or respect or social decorum or etiquette I would say that that Derek Eretz could be used to describe that, but I wouldn't equate lack of Derek Eretz with actual evil or injustice or transgression. You know, like I think that's that's reading Derek Eretz a little bit too far. Right, right. I hear that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So the idea that you're saying I think could still be true, but I just wouldn't take that example that far. What I was going to say is, um, oh, so just to restate what you were saying uh, with the Derek Eretz thing is that, um, actually, you know, I'm going to state it the way I was saying it, thinking about it, and maybe we'll merge them, which is, um, so different uh, cultures, like we said, have different standards of Derek Eretz. Some of them are purely utilitarian. Some some uh, cultures etiquette is designed to promote uh, certain social hierarchies. For example, like if you have this Derek Eretz that like, uh, I don't know, a servant is never allowed to look at a master because that would break like the hierarchy, you know, and, and societal order would break down. You know, um, others, uh, other types of etiquette might have to do with, um, with, you know, superstition. Other types of etiquette might have to do with, uh, with like, um, you know, aesthetic uh, considerations. 
Um, so I think maybe you could say that if Derek Eretz here is talking about like the true role of Derek Eretz, and in in, in Derek Eretz in Torah means that if you don't have proper etiquette, then you won't be able to effectively teach Torah. Maybe in Torah in Derek Eretz means that if you don't have a uh, Torah, like if your society's etiquette system is not focused around, you know, what is the true human um, value, which is like gaining and promoting knowledge. So then your etiquette is just empty. Like then there's no real point in having your etiquette. Like, yeah, you know, you can organize your society, but for what? Like just, so you can have a hierarchy, you know, you can, you can promote good mitos, but for what, you know, everything has to culminate in, you know, to quote my favorite pasuk, uh, you know, in Tanakh, you know, Ki haskil ki chesed umishpat You know that uh, that only in this may man truly glory, knowing and comprehending God, uh, because uh, knowing and comprehending me, Hashem, for I am the one who does kindness and justice and righteousness on earth, because in these is my desire. That that the whole value system of Torah is seeking knowledge that culminates in chesed, mishpat, and tzedakah. So if you don't have Torah, if you're not having a society or if you're on an individual level or on a societal level, if you're not valuing knowledge, so then what's the point of all your Derek Eretz, you know? And there are societies seemingly where like people treat Derek Eretz as having an intrinsic value. Like, like, you know, you cannot, uh, you know, um, uh, wear your hat indoors. You know, you cannot, uh, you know, if, if a lady walks in, you must stand up, you know, like, like people treat this as like, like, uh, intrinsic rules of, uh, like almost like morality, you know, and the Torah doesn't buy that view. So that's, that was my attempt at like trying to um, use Vanessa's approach of reflecting on cultural forms of etiquette and then using it to give the other pair for tomorrow's uh, explanation. Okay, any other uh, explanations you guys want to try out? Okay, let's go to the Mepharshim. So we have lined up for us tonight, uh, Rabinu Yona. Um, Iri and Sforno. Okay. So here's what Ben Yona says. He says like this. Uh, uh, sorry, in Torah in Shalim um, Someone who does not know Torah is not perfected in Midos. Shall Derech Eretz of Derech Eretz. Kirov Hamidos Hatovo Shish Badarche Haolam Batorahim. The majority of good mitos uh, in the ways of the world are found in Torah. Kamo vahavo I forgot how to havet taviteno. Um, you know, I'm just going to look this up. Hold on. Uh, this is in. I meant to get these pesukim uh, before Shir, but I totally forgot about it. Devarim fifteen eight, uh, which says. Um, so this is about sadaka. Rather, you shall open your hand to him. You shall lend him his requirement. That's how our school translates it. Whatever is lacking to him. Okay, so that's saying you should do tzedakah. Next one is ha'anek taniklo. That's in the puzzle beforehand, which is talking about when you um, uh, release a... Wait a minute. This is a misquote. It's not the possible right before it. Okay. Uh, I think all Torah had the wrong citation, maybe. Hold on. Oh, no, no, sorry. I, I'm looking at the wrong. No, no, I'm looking at the wrong place. Never mind. Okay, yeah. So this is talking about a case when you send out a slave, when you release a Jewish slave. So it says, um, what you have to do is, sorry, when you release a Jewish slave, you should not um, release him uh, empty-handed. You should uh, adorn him generously from your flocks, from your threshing floor, and from your wine cellar. That Hashem your God bless you uh, and gave you. And you should remember um, uh, that you were a slave in the land of Mitraim. And Hashem your God redeemed you. Therefore, I am commanding you this matter today. So when God released us from slavery, he gave us all these riches. So therefore, when you release someone from slavery, you should give them all these riches. Okay, so that's the second example. And then the third example is Mosne Tzedek, Avne Tzedek, uh, is uh, righteous uh, scales and righteous weights you should have. That's uh, making sure that you have your weights uh, that are calibrated properly. 
Vakama, Vakama Kyotaban, and many other examples. In Cain, if so, below Torah, lo yihiu de osaf shlemos bederech eretz. Without Torah, then your your uh, your traits will not be perfected in derech eretz. All right, so let me just summarize this. Okay, um, so hold on one here, a second here. Okay, so the summary is um, uh, if you don't know Torah, you can't be perfected in Midos uh, because uh, the majority of good Midos uh, are found in Torah. Okay, so that's his first clause. And then his second clause, uh, he interprets as follows. Um, he says, Im ein derech eretz ein Torah, Rotzlomar, shetzarech tchila l'sakin es atzbo b'midos. You first need to um, perfect yourself. Uh, I don't want to say perfect in the sense of attaining perfection, but like work on yourself in midos. Uvezeh tishkon ha-Torah lav. And then through this, the Torah will dwell in you. She'ena shochenes l'olam beguf she'eno bal midos tovos. The Torah never dwells in a body that does not possess good midos. This is, uh, you should not learn Torah and then afterwards acquire the Midos, because that's impossible. This is what we, uh, uh, this is like what we said, um, what we explained in Nasev and Nishma as we wrote. Now, I did not go and look at the Rabbin Yon on that, so let's, uh, for our purposes, ignore that. So he's saying, um, what does it mean in, in, in Torah is, uh, you need to um, acquire good midos, uh, and only then will the Torah dwell upon you. Um, do not say, I'll, I'll learn Torah and then get good midos, uh, because this is impossible. Okay, so now we have to understand the Rebbein Yonah. Okay, what is, he, uh, what is he saying for each of these things? What's the idea here? And I'd also like to understand, um, you know, he, he acknowledges that there are many examples uh, in, uh, you know, in Torah. Uh, it's, you know, interesting examples he gives. He gives the example of tzedakah. He gives the example of, of um, adorning your slave when you release him. And he's giving the example of uh, even weights. Okay. Um, so just, uh, you know, I, I, you know I, I would have said something like, Losachmod, you know, don't covet, or like the Haftal Recha Kamocha, or Losisna Sechicha Bavacha. I think these are just interesting examples that he gives. Yeah, Tamar? I'm a little bit confused actually about what he's saying, like in terms yeah. of the like, logic, sort of. Uh, you know what I mean? Like um, that these things are found in Torah, but it doesn't mean that if you, you couldn't have them some other way, right? Right. Yeah, that's like, a good question. Yeah. So I, I mean, I'm not sure what he's, what he's saying because I feel like that. Okay, so just yeah. to clarify here, he says, he's not saying you can't get these things without Torah. He's saying, Eno shalem the Midos. Uh, you will not become perfected in Midos. Okay. Um, and um, if your question is, yeah, but can't you? Um, so then uh, the Meiri is going to answer that question. Okay. But I think just, I, I think we can understand on, on, a, uh, on a simple level, which is that like, you know, there's going to be deficiencies in your midos uh, if you don't keep, uh, if you don't know Torah and and, and keep Torah. Um, does that answer your question or am I missing your question? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I think he's not giving such like a rigid, um, he's not making such a rigid like a uh, deduction sort of. Yeah. Like, um, he's not saying because these things are in Torah, therefore they're exclusively in Torah. It's just Right. I guess this is just how you should get them. So if yeah, you don't do yeah. Them, you're missing out. yeah. I think we still need to understand it, but you're right. He's not being. He's not saying that, that this is the only way to get Midos. Yeah, Vanessa. I'm similarly confused, and more on the second clause. Also, just you need to acquire good Mido, and only then will Torah dwelling. I understand that it's not. It's saying, don't learn Torah and expect good Mido to come afterwards. That I understand, but I don't understand. Where you're supposed to acquire good meat from in the first, like it doesn't seem to follow the first clause. It doesn't ah, seem okay. to like, really interact with it. Okay, so you're asking a good practical question, which is where do you get these good meat uh, if not from the Torah, especially because he just said that um, you know, that yeah. Torah, the majority of meat are in Torah. So I think this is what a lot of you were saying though, which is that um that uh that Torah is not the actually you know what maybe we should do. Hold on. It's possible I'm teaching this in the wrong order. It's possible that we should do the meat first. 
You know, let's do, I, mean, I, I don't know if this is going to confuse things or help things. I want to actually do the Meiri now. Uh, cause I think a lot of the questions that you guys are bothered by are answered by the Miri. And then we will be able to go back and look at the Rubini Yona without, uh, the, uh, without these deficiencies here. Okay. Without, you know, uh, these, uh, problems. Okay. So the Miri says as follows. So put the Rubini Yona on the, on the back burner. Okay. He says like this, Yedua who should derech eretz who munach al midos adam umusser hatarech lo beinian hahanhaga hamedinis vahatora neemara inyana bekan al hachelik hamitzvos hatora haba lahaishil adam derech yeshara vahanhagosa. Okay, so he's he's not learning like Rabbi Yona. Rabbi Yona said, uh, seem to be talking about knowledge of Torah and and learning Torah. Okay, Meiri says derech eretz derech eretz. Uh, refers to um, proper um, uh, midos, musar, and interpersonal conduct. Okay, um, that is Torah. Sorry, that is a uh, derech eretz. And then he says, "Hold on, I don't like the font like that." And then he says that um, Torah is um, is the the mitzvos that are um uh that that guide a person uh to the upright path in actions okay so he's not talking about learning torah he's talking about uh, the practice of torah okay so now he says like this uh okay so he says um Without the mitzvahs of the Torah, which guide a person in this, a person will not have perfection in derech eretz that comes through his natural dispositions. Even if you ha are the most naturally disposed to being a, uh, a ethically good person, um, uh, because uh, you cannot reach the utmost perfection uh, unless you you uh, uh, unless you are you cling to the ways of the Torah. Okay, so what is he, he's, he's saying? So I'm just going to summarize this here. So he's saying um, that uh, without the mitzvos of the Torah to guide you, uh, you will not reach the utmost level of good mitos, even if you have a really great natural disposition for good mitos. Okay, so then he asked the question that Tamar was bothered by. Uh, oh, does he? No, he does that later. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll let him talk. So he says, Yeah, he says, So he says, uh, Likewise, if you don't have a good uh, character disposition, so then the mitzvahs of the Torah will not alone uh, bring you to that perfection. The mitzvahs guide you in a general way. It's impossible for the Torah to legislate every single particular situation that comes up in day to day life uh, that needs Musar and Derek Eretz. For example, the Torah prohibits uh, foods. In general, because it doesn't want you to be uh, to uh, pursue excess, uh, which leads to harm. Okay, so he says, "Shiroi lahavim midrachaha shekol mosar rudiva sova sova yeser hura." You're supposed to learn from the Torah that, in general, um, chasing after excess is going to be bad for you. Afilu b'machal shlo nesser, even in areas that are not aser. Uh, okay, so what is he saying? He's saying uh, likewise. Even um, sorry, if if you don't have um, uh, good character dispositions, then the mitzvos of the Torah will not bring you to perfection, since the mitzvos only perfect you in a general manner, uh, but can't regulate uh, your mitos in particular scenarios. Okay, uh, scenarios. Okay, for example, scenarios. Scenarios. Okay, for example, Kashrus uh, teaches you that excess is harmful, 
but doesn't regulate your indulgence uh, in excess eating of kosher food. Okay, so in other words, you're supposed to. So if you if a person said, well, I don't need to regulate my own mitos at all. I'll just keep mitzvos and they will perfect me. That is uh, not true. Okay, that if you just you know, you, you, what you need to do is you need to get, you need to learn perfections from the mitzvahs, let them guide you, but then extrapolate and then apply those mitzvahs perfections beyond the realm of Torah. I mean, this is kind of the whole premise of Pirkei Avos. Okay. Now I think he asked the question that Tamar asked. He says like this. Um, oh, not, maybe not yet. Okay. So that's what the Ram says. Uh, that this pairing shows that each one benefits the existence of its fellow and completes it. So some of our Chachamim teach us two things from this. Uh, he says, um, no person should trust in the perfection, in his natural perfections, to the extent where he is lenient uh, or lax in any of the mitzvahs of the Torah. So he says, even though the Avos reached the perfection that was promised by the Torah and they became complete tzaddikim without Torah, that's like what Tamar was asking about. Not everyone can reach that level. Not everyone merits that. Okay, so he says like this. Um, we learn from here. Oh, hold on. We learn from here that we need to change the font. Okay, so he says we learn from here that no person should rely on their their good natural uh, character uh, in a manner which leads them to uh, be lax or lenient with any of the mitzvos. Um, uh, because even though the Avos were able to become total tzaddikim without Torah, not everyone uh, is that lucky, <laughs> okay? So you, in other words, don't think that you can dispense, don't think that you can say, well, isn't it enough to be a nice person? I don't need the mitzvahs of the Torah to perfect me. No, you need the mitzvahs of the Torah. You might get to a certain level of perfection without the mitzvahs of the Torah, but uh, you really need the mitzvahs in order to bring you to full perfection. Okay, you can make mistakes, you can misapply things, you can not follow through, you can like cut corners, you know, you can uh, miss certain ideas in perfection. The mitzvahs, uh, you need the mitzvahs for that. Secondly, uh, a person will not be yote the obligation of his soul simply by fulfilling the details of the mitzvahs. About Yavin Davar Mitov Davar Vyas Bonin, but he needs to uh, uh, extrapolate and understand Ki Hahe Arab Ho Mida Tova Ba. I think that's a typo. He is Ahir Mikol Mida Maguna because, uh, um, you know, learning about each good Mida and uh, guarding from every bad Mida. Uh, is included in all the mitzvahs of the Torah for those who understand its ways. So he says the second lesson is, let's see here, hold on. Can't find my mouse. Okay, we also learn, sorry, these fonts. Uh, we, we, no, oh, sorry. Okay, we also learn from here that um, that no person can fully discharge his obligation simply by keeping the details of halacha. Okay, rather he should strive to extrapolate um, lessons in midos from all the mitzvos and apply those lessons to himself beyond what halacha dictates. Okay, so I think the Meiri uh, almost doesn't need explanation, right? Um, he's saying that uh, that yeah, the mitzvos guide you to uh, to perfection of mitos, but but you need to work on mitos independently of the mitzvos, and you need to look to the mitzvos to guide you in mitos. So each one is certain is like interdependent in a way that that you need both of them to reach perfection uh, in in either. 
Um, you know, there are a lot of examples of this. Um, I was thinking of an example recently, um, I think also from Rabbi Fader's year, um, where um, let's say like, uh, you know, there's one halacha that I think all Jews who keep the halacha recognize as a very good halacha. And the non-Jewish world is just totally at a loss with this. Namely, when someone is sitting Shiva, uh, it's usher to uh, ask them how they're doing. Okay, and not just when they're saying Shiva, but like, you know, through their, through their availus, you know. Um, you know, I saw, where did I see this? Um, I see a TV show. I can't remember if I saw a TV show where someone died and then someone said, oh, how are you doing? You know, and like, you know, it, Halakha just has it right. Like, yeah, you should not ask. And, you know, when you're sitting Shiva, then you know the, uh, the 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 person who's in mourning needs to initiate the conversation. Uh, so like things like that, I feel like even the nicest intentioned person, it's very hard for them to get that idea. But halacha like steers you in the right direction, you know. Uh, and then this is just like one example, but there are many examples of this uh, as well. Um, and I, I don't think we need examples of how um, of how halacha itself does not perfect you. I think the example we gave with kashrus is really good. Uh, another example um, is. You know, um, like in areas of justice, you know, like uh, there's, you know, halakha requires that you, you know, halakhic justice will take you to the, the um, uh, you know, to what is right and not right. But like beyond that, you should strive to do chesed and to like have a pshara and have, a comp you know, a compromise and not make recourse to like suing someone in the court. Yeah, Lauren? I guess I'm, I'm thinking, is this related to like how the Ramban explains like social to you, how mm -hmm. it means like exactly. going beyond the... What the yeah, exactly. So if, for those who are not familiar, uh, the one of the, the uh, top five Rambans that everyone should learn is the Ramban on Kedoshim Tihu at the beginning of Parshas Kedoshim, where he basically says that it's possible to... The reason why the Torah needs to say Kedoshim Tihu, that you should be holy, is because it's possible to be a novel or a manual Bereshusa Torah which is to keep all of halakha and be still be a scoundrel, you know, so you can like, you know, uh, keep all of kashas and be a glutton, or you can, um, you know, keep all of uh, nida and all of the sexual laws and like be a, uh, uh, you know, grossly sexually obsessed person, you know, within the confines of your marriage, you know, or you could, um, uh, you know, keep all of the halakhos in, uh, in everything else, but there's no iser to, uh, the Ramban says there's no Israel to be drunk. You know, you could like be drunk and a glutton all day, you know? Um, so, so the Torah, you know, so that is, yeah, according to the Ramban, that's what the Torah is saying there. And that's what this uh, Mishnah is saying here. Same, same idea. Okay. Any other questions on the Miri? I think the Miri is pretty clear. I do think that this does address, I said this in, in passing, but I want to uh, emphasize it. I think that there is an attitude, especially among uh, non-religious people that, you know, isn't it enough to be a good person? Well, the answer is is no for many reasons. Okay, like you know, we hold that being a nice person is not what a tzelam elokim is. Tzelam elokim is is perfecting your mind and living a life of knowledge. But let's say we have your premise that it is enough to be a nice person. You can't be a nice person without following the Torah because you're going to miss out on uh, on a lot of um, of applications which are legislated by halakha you know you're not going to know how to be nice in certain areas so halakha has to tell you and you're also going to miss out on a lot of ideas about being a nice person if you don't look to the mitzvahs for guidance so no it's not even if you're even if your values is, is is it enough to be a nice person you're not going to be able to succeed in that without torah okay so now let's look back at the rabbi yona and i think this might answer some of our questions Okay, so I think this sheds light on if you don't know Torah, you can't be perfected in Midos because the majority of good Midos are found in Torah. I think that's what the Miri was saying. Um, I think Rabbi Yona adds one nice thing. You know, I quoted that Pasuk from Yirmiyahu earlier about Chesed, Mishpat, and Tzedakah. So I happen to notice that the first Pasuk that he brings of, uh, you know, uh, give the poor person whatever he needs, that is Tzedakah. Um, adorn your slave with riches when you release them. That's Chesed. And then having just scales uh, and equal weights and measures is mishpat, you know? So it, I, it sounds like he is, I mean, I don't know if he did this intentionally, but he is using an example from each category of human perfection in terms of how we treat one another, which is pretty cool. Um, 
So the only thing we need to figure out about Rabbeinu Yonah is what does he mean that the Torah does not dwell in a body that doesn't have good midos? I think that's an interesting lush on there. Oh, sorry. And this also answers the question that was asked earlier uh, when he says you need to uh, get your midos first. Um, how do you do that? So the answer is there are a lot of ways to get a good midos. I mean, you know, your parents can teach you good midos. You can like just work on yourself through self-improvement. You can look to your society and like, you know, if your society has good etiquette that is based on midos, you can like, uh, you know, train yourself in that. You could just cultivate empathy, you know, but, uh, but you know, uh, like he says in the first part, you you can't get perfected midos without Torah. So, but what does it mean though that the Torah doesn't dwell in a person, in a body that doesn't have good midos? <clears throat> okay uh, i'm gonna speculate here i don't know for sure what he means and i guess we would have to see what he says on nasa vanishma here but um you know we mentioned that the purpose of learning torah is not just to know it, but it is to, is it, it has to be real to you. It has to like affect the way that you, it has to affect your decisions, your behavior, and your actions. So you can know a lot of Torah, um, but if your Midos are not trained to be able to implement that Torah, uh, then uh, then the Torah is not reaching its Qiyum. The Torah is not reaching its culmination. So let's take an example that's easy to relate to. Let's take like Lush and Hara, you know? So you can learn all the Gemara's about Lush and Hara, but if you, st well, okay, I, I know I just told Lauren that you're not supposed to, that, that we're uh, not talking about violating halakha here. I'm going to use it anyway, because it's um uh, a good example. Actually, no, I'll use a different example. Let's say lo losach mode, okay? Uh, uh, not coveting, you know? Or let's say, okay, let's say babakama. Let's say you learn all this stuff about nazikin and about justice, you know? If you have not trained your, your, uh, your emotions to, you know, conduct themselves with justice and to have, you know, uh, treat your fellow human being uh, with equality and, uh, and with kindness and compassion, all of that knowledge that you have is not reaching its ultimate fulfillment because the purpose of having the knowledge is that it should affect your entire organism, affect your entire, affect your entire uh, being, you know? So I, I think that's what it means that the Torah doesn't dwell in such a person because yeah, that Torah might be affecting your mind, but the Torah is not really in you, you know, if it's not in all of you, which is your, your body uh, as well. Again, by body, we mean your actions and your psyche. So I think that's like a basic idea. Uh, but he's, um, but the reason why the mission is bringing it here is he's saying, don't try this plan of, of um, I'm going to learn Torah and then I'll get Midos. Uh, and just to add one point is that, um, uh, and I've seen this elsewhere in, in Pirkei Avos, is that, uh, I think actually we saw this in Rabin and Yonah earlier that um, that if you learn Torah and your mitos are contrary, so then your mitos will oppose your learning of Torah and it will create a cognitive dissonance. But if you train your mitos to be in line with the values of Torah and then you learn, so then your mitos and your learning will be in line with each other. And the more you learn, then the more you'll be encouraged to follow those good mitos. Yeah, Lauren. I'm wondering if, like, an example of this could be, like, let's say, like, you know, certain deal, like, always trying to find, like, price mistakes, or it might not be, like, wrong to get it, but it's, like, kind of, like, you know that, like, yes, they do have to honor the price that if they post it, but you know the company's making a big mistake right. by by um, offering that price, and it's probably just, like, a better idea just to have this idea of, like, let me act with justice and not, you know, go into it, even though the Torah <laughs> technically allows it. Um, to have that general spirit of trying to pursue justice or tzedek, like, you know, giving tzedakah or treating your workers, like giving them off on their non-Jewish holidays, even right. though, like, technically you don't need to, but it's like a respectful thing to, you know, be nice to them. Right, yeah, that's a, that, that, that's a good example as well. And by the way, in terms of the Ramban that you mentioned, there's two Rambans, actually. Um, there's Ramban on Kedoshim Tiyu, and, uh, and then there's Ramban on Sisa Hayashar Vahatov, which is in areas of like monetary areas and areas of justice that you also have to go beyond the letter of the law. Okay, so that's Rabbi Yona. And then the last one, which is a short one here, is the Sforno. Sforno says, uh, Im ein Torah, hu hayuni. So he says, Torah is, I'm going to translate the Sforno because it's so short here. 
He says, uh, if there is no Torah, refers to the theoretical component, okay, meaning like the uh, uh, the knowledge, um, uh, the intellectual part of Torah, the intellectual component. In oso min derech eretz mimena. Okay, so then, um, then this type of derech eretz. Uh, sorry, there. Uh, translate that wrong. Then there cannot be this type of derech eretz, which is uh, its objective. Vehu hahetiv lezulaso lechavod boro ulhi damus elav kirtano. Namely, um, acting beneficially towards others for the glory of the creator and emulating his ways in accordance with his will. Likewise, when there is no, when, when, when there is none of this type of derech eretz, his buyer is clear in Sham Torah that there is no Torah. Okay, and the footnote here, uh, who uh, I think is Rabbi Moshe Kravitz, says, um, uh, footnote, um, he says, Ma she'in ha'adam isnagim b'derech eretz, um, the fact that a person doesn't conduct himself with derech eretz, hochacha is a proof shlo asak bechelik ha'yunish Torah that he hasn't uh, involved himself in the intellectual component of Torah. Shilu ha'magia avas Hashem v'yiraso because if he had reached a level of love and fear of Hashem, v'vadai shahaya misnahe karoi, he would definitely act properly agamin am luchavira. Uh, even with his fellow man. Okay, so this, I think, so what do you think this Forno is saying? I think this is kind of radically different than the approaches that we've taken before this, or that, we, that, that the Rubinion and Miri are taking. I'll give you a hint. There cannot be this type of Derek Eretz, which, which is his objective. Yeah, Tamar? I, it looks like he's reading Derek Eretz pretty far out of what we would consider like the social sphere and in this much like higher plane. Yeah. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. yeah. This is a higher level of Derek Eretz. So this is not etiquette and even not just good mitos. Okay. So he defines what Derek Eretz is talking about is acting beneficially towards others for the glory of God and emulating his ways according to his will. Okay. So that Pasuk Yomiyahu that I keep coming back to, in fact, it even uses the word aretz, right? Is uh, is haskel via do osi, comprehending and knowing me, shani Hashem ose chesed mishpat utstaka ba'aretz, who does kindness, justice, and righteousness in the land. Keep ele chavasti nu Hashem. So in other words, the derech eretz, this I think circles back to the discussion we had around Vanessa's approach, which is that there are many different types of derech eretz, but the Torah demands a specific kind of derech eretz. It's a derech eretz, that flows from the intellectual component of Torah, namely by studying God and his ways and emulating them for the sake of the glory of God, okay? So holding your teacup in a certain way has nothing to do with emulating God and is uh, and doesn't contribute to a society that uh, is about the Kavot Shemayim, okay? But the Ramam's Derech Eretz of, for example, um, you know, uh, cutting the bread in a way which doesn't glorify stinginess or gluttonousness, gl gl whatever, being a glutton, or caring for danger and safety while we're eating, or not, trying not to embarrass uh, the host, or having mercy on the waiter. All of these things are derech eretz that's modeled after the values of the Midos HaKadosh Baruch Hu, of God's uh, actions, and striving to create a society that is in line with that. So that's like the real Derech Eretz that the Torah is aiming at. And you can't get that Derech Eretz without Torah, because by definition, you need to learn about the ways of God in order to get it. And if a person 
claims to have Torah, but doesn't have that kind of derech eretz. Like, let's say a person is cruel, right? Uh, or let's say a person is, uh, is uh, you know, is, uh, you know, uh, angry, right? Uh, or haughty. So then he's clearly not, he hasn't gotten the memo. He hasn't, his, his, his Torah knowledge has not penetrated to the level of, um, of his action. And therefore he's lacking in, in, uh, in that. Uh, so I think that's like a really, really good, uh, good shot here. Yeah. Uh, I saw some hands fly up. Yeah. Vanessa. I think this is even like, even if you're doing something outwardly that like the behavior itself is good, like, I don't know, let's say like, it's like beyond a teacup, like offering to help someone. Have you ever like gotten like someone like who's like offering to help you, but like you can tell it's not because they think it's the right thing to do because like Torah says like you should be like kindly to others and like put their needs above your own. But like just because they're so purely anxious that if they don't offer it, like and it just feels yucky. Is that yeah. like weird? You know what I mean? I think that's what it's targeting. Like you can have the best needle, but if they're not coming from the right place and like rooted in a sense of like Torah and like Yerat Hashem, like right it's not a tr you don't truly have the meta you have the idea of it but like it's not right yeah that's a good example like that if, if you are um uh if you are doing the proper behavior uh but not it's not stemming from an understanding uh of why it's good or it's not for the sake of the glory of god and trying to emulate his ways so i would say that that is that works out for the rabbin yona and the meiri you know that is going to be a uh, good midos and it's going to uh, help you to get Torah, but it's not the, it, it's not the Derek Eretz that the Torah is, uh, is, is aiming at. We want etiquette that's rooted in our, uh, in our knowledge of God. You know, that's like what we're aiming at. Yeah, Vanessa. And I think this actually answers one of, I don't, I hope I'm not jumping too ahead, but like we have the question of like, how does this apply to the chassid in training? And like the chassid yeah. in training knows that like you have to offer people help. Like if the granny falls on the street, you pick her up. Like that's right. obvious. And like even like the more nitty gritty stuff like Hasi will do. But like if it's not specifically to glorify Hashem's name, like that's a really tough thing to do. Yeah. Like it's not right. even just like feeling bad for the other person. Like it has to be like Hashem is such a kind and loving person that like not person, that's good, but like yeah, you know what? Like Hashem is like kind and just, and like I have to emulate that. And my job as a Jew on earth is to like represent his like right. glory. Yeah, like that's such a hard thing to attain, and that makes so much more sense for a chassid in training than just like yeah. the average smoke. <laughs> right? Yeah, I think it really works out for a chassid in training because, like you're saying, it's only attainable for a chassid in training. And also, we've seen uh, other examples in the Mishnah where, like, you could th you could think of your know, chassid in training is going to be so involved in learning Torah, but it's very easy to learn Torah and and lose track of the fact that this has to express itself in. Derech Eretz, you know, like just becoming involved in your ivory tower, you know, so I think Chassid is prone to that as well. Yeah, I, I really like that point that, that Sforno, out of all the three of them, seems to be most directed towards the Chassid in training. Okay, so let's wrap this up. Let's go over all of our, our, uh, our questions and, and see if we can answer them. Okay, so um, for all these activities, uh, these variables are having and not having to be understood in a binary sense, or is there a quantitative sliding scale? I think it's pretty clear it's a quantitative sliding scale, right? I know this, you either have it or you don't. Um, what is the definition of Torah in this context? What does it mean to have or not have Torah? So according to Rabbi Yona, Torah is learning Torah. Um, and according to the Me'iri, then, uh, then Torah is practicing Torah. But each of them, I think, also uh, like uh, overlaps into the other. Because the Me'iri says that it's not just practicing Torah. You also have to like study the mitzvahs and extrapolate good mitos from them. So it's also a type of learning. And Rabbeinu Yona uh, is, you know, is clearly saying that you also have to do Torah in order to, uh, to, to get this, uh, to get to perfect your mitos. So it's, it, it's learning and the practice. Sforno, though, says Torah is specifically uh, the intellectual component because he's using Torah to define a specific type of derech eretz, which is a derech eretz that emulates God and serves the glory of God. So Sforno is learning as purely intellectual. Um, okay, what's the definition of Derek Eretz? So um, Rabbeinu Yona and the uh, Me'iri both say it is good Midos, and Sforno says Derek Eretz is specifically Midos that emulate God, not just social decorum and not just like doing the right thing. What's the relationship between the first and the fourth clause? We can't answer that today. What's the practical lesson or application? So Rabbeinu Yona and the Me'iri are both saying that you need to work on both fronts. Um, you need to, well, okay, sorry, let's start with the Miri. Miri is saying you need to work on both fronts. You can't just say, 
I'll do the mitzvahs and that will perfect my mitos. You need to work on the mitos separately and extrapolate mitos from the Torah. And you also can't say that um, it's enough to be a good person and I'll perfect my mitos without the Torah because yeah, Avram can do that, but good luck you doing it. There are, um, you know, there are, uh, you know, many situations that you're not going to be able to decide upon uh, with, you know, without guidance from the Torah. And there are going to be many cases where you're, you're overwhelmed by your emotions, you know, so you need to use them together. Um, that is the practical lesson. And that's also the Havamina. Um, Rabbi Yona says that the Havamina of if there's no Torah, then there's no Derek Eretz. I, I, I just blanked on the Rabbi Yona. Hold on. Rabbi Yona says, Oh, yeah. If there's no Torah, there's no Derek Eretz. What's the Havamina here? If you don't know Torah, you can't be perfected. So Havamina is if you don't know Torah, you can be perfected in Midos. So I think that's the same as the Meiri, right? Like I could, I could, I could, you know, um, work it out without, without, uh, without um, Torah. You know, I could work out either on my fallback on my natural disposition or like figure it out like the Abos did. Uh, but then the Havamina for the second part is different according to Rebbein Yona. It's it's I can learn Torah and then perfect my mitos. And we're saying that that's not going to work out because first of all, your Torah is not going to reach its culmination and there's going to be cognitive dissonance that's going to actually like impede your pursuit of Torah. Um, so that is the practical lesson and application. Who's the audience for this Mishnah? So I think according to Rabbeinu Yonah and Meiri, it could really be anybody. Um, and even Hasidim can fall into this category. But according to the Sforno, it really is aimed at someone who is like, you know, really involved in knowledge of God. I mean, it could... Uh, I think even for people like us, it's also good because when we are merciful, we shouldn't just be merciful because it's a nice thing. We should be merciful because we're emulating God's mercy and that'll direct us to using God as a model. And sometimes this will make a big difference. Like in, um, in uh, Lauren's example from Rabbi Zimmershir, you know, in Amer America, hatred is considered to be a bad mita, but in Hashem's values, Hashem hates Rashaim. And so we should hate Rashaim as well, you know? Um, so I think that's a practical application as well. Okay, this was a nice manageable chunk of Pirkei Avos. Uh, next week, Bli Neder, we will tackle Im Ein Chachma Ein Yira. And it mean Yira Ein Chachma. You know, we've done a couple of Mishnayos that talk about the relationship between Chachma and Yira. Kosha Chachma, so Meruba Al Kosha Yira's Chata Meruba Al Chachma, so Chachma so Miskayemes. That anyone whose fear of sin is greater than his Chachma. Then his chachma will persist, and and if not, then not. So I, I'm curious to see if this overlaps that. Okay. Any other uh, questions or thoughts? I will take that as a no. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thank uh, you. Nice to be back. Okay. Have a good Shabbos. Thank and, you. Uh, good week. Bye.